Good morning, Crossroads, and welcome again. And if you're visiting us this morning, if you're your, your first time here joining us online, I just want to encourage you. To, we like to know who you are and, and connect with you. On our website, www.crossroadsaog.com, we have a connect card. You'll find it if you go to the sermons page and then scroll down a little bit. You'll see a button there that says connect. If you would just take a couple seconds and, and just go on there and connect and, and fill, give us a little bit of information. And if you have a prayer request, you, that's a great place where you can put it in there, submit it, and we would love to be praying for you this week with whatever needs that you may have. Well, I'm glad you joined us today and the rest of the, with the rest of the Crossroads family. And hey, the, the, last week we started a, a series called The Holy Spirit. And like I told you uh, last week, and that my intentions in these first few messages is really to lay a, a good, solid foundation for our study that we can build on. I want, to, I want us to all start, you weren't here in the morning, but uh, when I was out live, I, I had everyone hold up a, a clean sheet of paper. I want, you, I want to get rid of all the preconceived ideas or, or maybe bad experiences or different experiences you've had concerning the Holy Spirit and His operation in our lives. I want to have a clean sheet and I want to start fresh and we want to, we want to look, at who, look, at this, look at this topic and, and, and see everything that, that God has intended for us in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Now, now last week we started by taking a look at what Jesus had to say about him. I thought it would be a good idea to start with what Jesus had to say about the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do in our lives. And last week we talked about that the Holy Spirit, he wants to help us. He wants to teach us. He wants to use us. He wants to guide us. And he wants to remind this world of their need of a Savior. See, the first thing we need to understand when it comes to talking about the Holy Spirit is that, is that he came to be a part of our lives every day. Not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesdays, not just on prayer meeting night. The Holy Spirit wants to walk with you and in you and be a, a, a part of your life every day. Now this week, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna hit another area I think is vital to understand in order to start building upon. And that's, and that's that, the, that the Holy Spirit... He is a person. We need to realize that the Holy Spirit is a person. And the reason this is so important is because, I don't know if you realize or not, there's actually uh, theological belief systems that are in operation today that teach and believe that the Holy Spirit is not a person. Matter of fact, they, 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 they teach and believe that He's, he's simply a, a power or a force. He is not a person. And the reason it's so important to understand that the Holy Spirit is a person is because if you don't see Him as a person, listen, if you don't see Him as a person, you'll never develop a personal relationship with Him. See, that's why it's so important to understand and realize that He's a person. Because He wants to have a personal relationship with you. You, know, you, you don't develop a personal relationship with a force or a power, do you? You know, I, I, don't, I don't talk to gravity and tell it my problems. I don't, I don't talk to electricity and ask it questions. Those are forces. Those are powers. That's, that's not what God intended here. Uh, we, we don't do that. Seeing the Holy Spirit as a person is extremely important in order to have the right relationship with Him. Now, I don't want to just tell you today that He's a person. And, and, and I, I, some of you would believe me, but I want to I show you. I want to show you through the Scriptures and from the Scriptures why the Holy Spirit is a person. Amen? And, and one, of the way the, one of the way the Bible makes it clear that the Holy Spirit is a, is a person is, is first is because that's the way Jesus describes Him. Jesus describes Him as a person. In John, we had the Scripture last week, but the Helper... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, notice what he says, He will teach you all things. Notice, when describing the Holy Spirit, Jesus doesn't say, it will teach you, or the, the thing will teach you. He will teach you. He uses the personal pronoun, He, to describe the Holy Spirit. And he just doesn't do it here. When you read this whole discourse on the Holy Spirit that Jesus gave, that we looked at last week, Continually, he uses the personal pronoun he, because he is a person. 
So we know he's a person because Jesus tells us he's a person. Amen? However, there's another way the Bible lets us know that, that he's a person. And, and that's by revealing to us through the scriptures that he possesses the characteristics of a person. I want to show you, I want to walk through a few passages here today to show you that the Bible lets us know that the Holy Spirit has the characteristics of a person. You know, one of the main things that makes a person a person. You know one of the main things that makes a person a person? No. Personality. You know, yes, did you, did you read this? No. Yes, okay. <laughs> See, she's supposed to say life. Well, life, life does define us, but a tree is alive. Right. But it's not a person. You know, uh, the, the plants that my wife killed at home, they're alive. They were alive, but they're not a person. But what makes a person a person, what makes it, what makes it unique is a personality, or, or theologically speaking, a soul. What makes a person a person is that they have a soul. And when it comes to the soul, the many, many believe that it's made up of three parts. You know what they are? The mind, the will... And the emotions, mind, will, and emotions. We, we we think with our minds, we desire with our with our with our wills. Okay, our will tells us what we want, and we feel with our emotions. You see, the the soul or our mind, our will, and our emotions. Can I tell you something? That's what sets us apart from everything else that God created in in, in the world. It, what sets us apart is that, that God gave, breathed into us uh, the, the, the breath of life and, and, that, and, and, and gave us a soul that has a mind, will, and emotions. And it sets us apart and it makes us a person through, of everything else in creation. Amen? And what I want to show you today from the scripture is that the reason that we know the Holy Spirit is a person is because He also has all three. He has a mind... He has a will, and he has emotions. And guess what? This is the good news about this. Since the Holy Spirit is God, and he lives within us, that means he is able to teach you and me. Listen, he's able to teach us. He's able to teach us to think like God thinks. He's able to, to teach us to desire what God desires and feel what God feels. Oh, isn't that neat? Who, who better to teach us? You see, let me see the next one. You see, the Holy Spirit is not simply a power that we need to get hold of. He is a powerful person that wants to get hold of us. Oh, hallelujah. He is a person. So this morning, I want to show you that the Holy Spirit is a person. And the first way we, we know that is this, because He has a mind. He has a mind. Now, now, we looked at this passage last week again, but I want to show you once again. John 16, 13, it says this. Jesus said, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will guide you into all the truth. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you. How can, how can He guide us into all truth if He doesn't know all truth? Follow that? He can't guide us into all truth. The Spirit can't guide us into all truth if He doesn't know all truth. But the fact is, He knows all truth, and, and, and he, he can guide us in it because he, he, because he has knowledge, He has intellect, He has a mind. He has a mind. Let me ask you something. Does anyone here, oh boy, I'm going to get in trouble. Does anyone here know, know someone in life that, that they honestly feel that, that they know everything about everything? Why are you shaking your head? Because I know people. And Josie's back there. <laughs> you know someone who, 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 who they feel that they know everything about everything. Mm -hmm. What I mean is they have the answer to every question. They have the answer to every problem and every issue under the sun. They, they know what you need to know. And, and here's the best part about these type of people. If you disagree with them, then you're wrong. Anyone want to have someone like that? I saw this sign this this week in, in, in one of my colleagues' offices. And I, I saw it and I chuckled because if you know the guy, it makes a lot of sense. Look what it says here. It says, I'm not arguing. I'm explaining when I, why I'm right. Some people, you know, don't, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just letting you know I'm right and that you're wrong. See, do you have anyone like that in your life? And let me say, 
If they're sitting in the room right next to you, don't look at them. Just keep on looking straight at me. Don't lose your focus. Well, well, here's the reality I, wanna, I want you to take away here on this first point. I want you to understand this morning is that as a believer, listen to me, as a believer, you've got someone living inside of you that knows everything. Say everything. Every. Every. He knows everything. That, as a believer, he knows, he knows the answer. Listen, he knows the answer to every question, every problem, and every issue in your life. And that's the Holy Spirit. He knows everything. As a matter of fact, it even gets better than that. Look what it says here in 1 Corinthians. It says, for who knows a person's thoughts except their wife? No, I'm kidding. Who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? But listen to this, in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Oh man, now get this, not only does he know everything there is to know about you and me, he knows everything there is to know about God. Why? Because he is God. He's a person. You see, we have someone living inside of us that knows everything about every problem and every question we will have in life. The Holy Spirit. But here's the catch. And here's something I've been, I've been trying to train myself. Unless we ask Him, unless we view Him as a person and have a relationship with Him, and that we have to ask Him. I think I said that all backwards. What I'm saying is, unless we ask him and view him as someone we have a relationship with, it's going to do us of no value. I shared last week, quickly, that one of the things I've been trying to teach myself is that when I get, when I get blocked on Scripture and, and I can't get an understanding or, or for some reason it's not clicking inside and, and I can't find the application or how to apply it in my life, you know, I, I, I always look, at, look towards my commentaries. But, but I've been finding when, when they fail me, and not that they're wrong, it's just, it's just not clicking yet. I've been trying to teach myself to get in the presence of God and say, Holy Spirit, can you reveal what, you're what, what you wrote here? Reveal to me how it applies to my life and how I can use it today. And can I tell you, it never fails. Once, 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 once I do that, it starts clicking and clicking and clicking. It gives me application. And, and many times, he gives me application to use in messages. Oh, it's so fascinating to know that within me, within me lives the, the one who knows everything, who wrote this book. So, 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 so let, me, let me ask you a question. Have you ever prayed, Lord, give me the mind of Christ for this situation? You ever pray that? You ever, Lord, give me the mind of Christ for this situation. Well, I want you to know this morning. I want you to know something. You got it. You got it. It's in you. All you have to do is ask Him to reveal to you what you need to know in that situation. You see, the Holy Spirit is a person, and one of the benefits we have, listen, one of the benefits we have is, 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 that, is that we have someone living inside of us that knows everything about everything that we will face in life. And the best part is this, that He is committed to help us, hallelujah, and teach us forever. Amen? So the, the next thing, that number two, the next thing that we know that He is a person is this, He has a will. He has a will. You know, I was thinking that one of the things that, that makes life, doing life uh, interesting with others is that everybody's got their own will. I mean, think of it. That's what makes life, that's what makes a family interesting, isn't it? That's what makes a workplace interesting. That's what makes sometimes a, a board meeting interesting is because everyone has their own will. What I mean is that we all have our own will. We all have our own desires and preferences that drive us to make the decisions and choices we make in life. Amen? Let me tell you, if you ever want to be reminded in the Spadaro household that everyone has a will... All you have to do is ask a few questions, amen? All you got to say is, what do you want for dinner? You're going to hear pizza. You're going to hear Mexican. You're going to hear Chipotle. You're going to hear, hear Chick-fil-A. Real quietly, you'll hear chicken parmesan. <laughs> if you want to know that everybody has a will in the Spadaro household, all you got to say is, what movie you want to watch tonight? 
You know, oh, oh, there's a love story, Hallmark Channel's always on, uh, uh, you, how about a comedy, an action movie, a documentary, and you know, then you'll just hear a faint voice, I don't care, anything that has a happy ending. I got her laughing over here. Here we go, here we go. If you want to know that people have a will in our house, you ask this question, what color, what color should we paint the room? And you know what? That's an easy one. Whatever mom says. See, but, but you got, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> you get this though? One of the things that makes us who we are and sets us apart as individuals, that God has given us each a will. We have, a, I, I lost her, church, I lost her. Let's lay your hands on her right now. That we each have a will. Well, I want you to know this morning, it's the same with the Holy Spirit. He is a person. And I want you to know this morning, <laughs> she's killing me, that he has a will. And let me tell you something, he's not afraid to express it in your life. Let me, let me give you a few examples here. <laughs> you go to Acts, Acts 8, 29. It says, listen now, all serious now. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside that carriage. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go. Acts 13, 2, it says this. It says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Let me give you one more. Acts 16, 6. Now when they had gone through that name and the, and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Now, they eventually did preach it, but right then, in those circumstances, the Holy Spirit exercised His will on them and said, no. You see, the Holy Spirit has a will. He has a will. However, no, not only had the, not, not, He not only has a will, I want you to get this, He has a will. He has a will for specific individuals, for specific times and circumstances in their lives. For one, it was to go. For, for, for others, it was set them apart. And then, and then again for another, it was hold off, don't go. You see, the Holy Spirit has a will and wants to express it and reveal it to us. And the good news this morning is this. He wants to do the same thing for us today. Oh, church, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal God's will. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask you another question. Can you do this without laughing? Okay. Did you ever ask God, what's his will for your life? Yes. Josie, you ever ask God, what's your will for my life? Yes. Well, what, what's your will for this specific situation? What's your will for this decision? Should I take this job? Should I do this? Should I do that? Well, then, let me ask you. Here, here's, here's, here, this is going to be an easy question. Since the Holy Spirit has a will, amen? And now follow me. Since the Holy Spirit has a will, and his will is the will of God, doesn't it make sense to get to know and develop a relationship with Him? Think about who's living inside you. The Holy Spirit has a will, and we know His will is God's will, and He's living inside you. You see, one of the things the Holy Spirit wants to do is express and reveal His will, God's will, for your, for your life. That's one of the, the things He wants to do in us. You see, let me, let me, let me, point, let me say it like this. When it comes to the will of God, here's something you need to remember, Okay? And, and, and I'm guilty of making this thing so difficult myself. But, but when it comes to the will of God, I want you to remember this. That through His Word, okay, through His Word, God, He, he reveals to us His general will for our lives. Okay? However, through the, through, the, through the leading and the witness of the Holy Spirit within, well, that's where God reveals to us His specific wills for our lives will for our lives. You make sense? Mm -hmm. let, let, me, let me explain it like this. The, through the Word of God, the Word of God, it will tell you how to have a healthy marriage. It will tell you how to treat your spouse. You, you should read this. You, it will it, tell you how to, how to love your mate. But the Holy Spirit will lead you and show you who you should marry. See, who I should marry wasn't in this book. Well, how I should treat that person, but who I should marry... I believe I was led to that by the through the Holy Spirit. See, the, here we go. The Word of God will, 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 will teach you that God is going, God can and will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. Amen? But the Holy Spirit will show you which job you should take that He wants to use to do that through. Follow me? 
Here's another one. The Word of God will teach you how to be a good parent. It'll teach you how to love your kids. But here's the great part. The Holy Spirit will show you how to parent those kids that He gives you. He will, he, the Holy Spirit will teach you how to, how to parent that child He gave you with that unique personality and that strong will. Oh, here, here's a parenting tip for you. Here, here's a parenting tip for all of you. Pray that the Holy Spirit will tip you off about your kids. You remember that? We pray, someone prayed that for our lives. Pray that the Holy Spirit will tip you off when something's off in their lives. And I tell you, we prayed that in our lives, and God, I tell you what, man, He's a good informant. And, and, and this is something I encourage you to do. The Holy Spirit wants to, to lead and guide you and be an active member in your life. You get what I'm saying? Let me give you one more. The Word of God will teach us how to pray. The disciples said, to the Lord, teach us how to pray. And Jesus taught them how to pray. Our Father. But get this. The, Holy, the, the, the Bible tells you how to pray. But the Holy Spirit will help us with what to pray. With what to pray. Look at what it says here in Romans. It says this. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance, listen, with the will of God. Oh, man, with the will. You see, the way we get to know the mind of God and the will of God is by getting to know the person living in us who knows them both. That's the Holy Spirit. He's a person. So we know the Holy Spirit is a person because he has a mind. We know he's a person because he has a will. And then lastly, here's the last one. We know he's a, we know he's a person because he has emotions. He has emotions. Let me show you a scripture here that you're all familiar with. and We're going we're gonna to visit this one again at a later date. But Galatians 5, 22, 23, it says this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's an emotion. Is joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is all these things. Now I want you to notice something here. All of these emotions that are listed, you know what they're all characteristics of? A person. People. A person feels all of these things. You see, all the things listed here, re are, here related to the Holy Spirit are things that a person, that you and I experience and the reason for that is because the Holy Spirit is a person. Am I, am I making my point today? Now, however, I want to share with you something. There's another emotion that we find related to the Holy Spirit. And it's in Ephesians chapter 4. It says this, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. See, the Holy Spirit has emotions just like us. And just like us, some of those emotions are positive, like love and joy. But I want you to know this morning that some of those emotions are negative, like grief and sorrow. And here's the thing I want to point out to you today, that you have to understand if you're going to have a relationship with Him, is that the negative emotions we read about here in Ephesians 4, that the Holy Spirit feels. Can I tell you something this morning? It's a result of what you and I allow into our lives. Think about that. It's a result of what you and I allow in our lives. I want to read you, if I want to put this, this scripture here in context in, what we're in Ephesians 4. And it's, it's quite a bit, but I want to show you what it's talking about. Ephesians 4. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood or lying. Can I tell you something? Lying grieves the Holy Spirit. Whether it's this big a lie or this big a lie. It grieves him. And speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, can I tell you something? Anger in the wrong way, when it turns to sin, it grieves the Holy Spirit. Do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. No wonder why he's upset. Because we let this operate in our lives uncontrolled. It gives the devil a foothold in our lives. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Stealing grieves the Holy Spirit. 
but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Next one. Do not let any unwholesome talk. Can I tell you? Our unwholesome talk, our words, can actually grieve the Holy Spirit. Come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of, here we go, all bitterness that grieves the Holy Spirit. Rage, anger, brawling, and slander. Oh my gosh. You know, when I'm talking about other people, and, I, and I'm spreading things that I don't know are true, you know what you're doing? You know what I'm doing? I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. Along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other other, just as Christ and God forgave you. Can I tell you what unforgiveness does? Can I tell you? Unforgiveness and bitterness, it grieves the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now let me, let me, let me sum all of this up. Okay, I wanted to read them all to you because I want you to know, the, it, Paul, Paul gives us an, a, a, a pretty good list here of what he's talking about. But let me sum it all up like this. What grieves the Holy Spirit is this. It's sin. Sin grieves the Holy Spirit. When we allow sin to find a home Listen to me, church. This is so important. When we allow sin to find a home and a place in our heart, and we let it, we let it set up a tent and, 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 and hang out, it grieves the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you why it grieves Him. The reason it grieves Him is because He loves us. He died for us. He gave everything He had for us. And whenever you, you, you see someone you love, listen to me, whenever you see someone you love doing something that you know will hurt them, it hurts you, doesn't it? Think, let me ask you parents. Whenever you, you, you see your kids doing something, you know that can hurt them. Doesn't it, doesn't it hurt you? Well, can you imagine what the Holy Spirit feels? You see, the reason that it's so important to realize, listen, that, we, that the Holy Spirit is a person is because it's a reminder that by our actions, by our words, that we... Can hurt him. I think in the message it says, "Do not." It says, "Do not break his heart." Oh, that's that's pretty heavy. See, as a matter of fact, I realized this week, as I was preparing for this, that just like any other relationship in my life, okay, I can grieve or hurt the Holy Spirit and not even realize I'm doing it. I can I I can be so oblivious to to to, to that anger. Because, because I'm, I'm feeling, I, I, want, I feel good about releasing that anger that I'm oblivious to what I'm doing to him. Let me explain. You know, there's been times, and there's been times that I've hurt you with either my words or my actions. And, and the funny thing is this. I didn't know it at the time. You know what I found out? I found out maybe when I got home or I tried to give her a call. And I found out because our interaction changed. You don't have to say amen. Our interaction changed. What, what, I mean is, what I mean is, it wasn't, hey, how you doing? It was, hello. Or it, it wasn't, I'll talk to you. It was just, goodbye. It was cold, short answers. Or, or I found out because when I came in, I tried to put my arms around her and give her a kiss. She, she stiffened up, you know, because, she, because, because I hurt her. And, and now, now there's something we got to deal with. And then, and then finally she says, I'm upset with you because of this. See, I hurt her, and I didn't even realize it. But here's the, here's the point. It, 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 it affected our intimacy. She still loved me, and she was still my wife. But there was something that needed to be, the air needed to be cleared. Well, I want to tell you something. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. When we grieve Him, He still loves us. And he'll still do anything for us. And we're still saved. But it's going to have an impact on our intimacy. It's going to have an impact on how, he, how, how we can relate to each other. Until, listen, until we make that thing right. Until we make that thing right. Let me share with you one more verse today. One more verse. It's in Psalm 139, 23 and 24. It says this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me, listen, that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. This morning, I want to, I want to close like this this morning. 
I want you to have a talk with the Holy Spirit and ask Him this question. And ask Him if there's anything in your life that offends Him today. Is there anything in your life that's grieving Him this morning? You may be listening this morning, and, and, and as, I was, as, as I was hitting in some of these things, the Holy Spirit already started putting His finger on certain things, maybe certain relationships in your life that you know is grieving Him. And you've, you've lost that intimacy. There, there, you, there, was, there was more of an excitement to go into His presence maybe, maybe six months ago than, there, than it is right now because the intimacy has been lost. Maybe God's already put His finger on something in your life today. Maybe a sin or a habit that's found a place. You know, it, it comes in, it, it put up a tent, and you got comfortable with it being there. Maybe a bad attitude or feelings that you let develop over some situations in your life. Maybe it's some unforgiveness and bitterness that you're holding on to, to, to someone in your circle. Whatever it is that's been impacting your relationship and intimacy with God, Oh man, my prayer, I want you to pray and make things right with Him today. Clean, clear the air. Clear the air. He is a person. He is a person. He can get grieved by what we do. And let me say, let me say this. Let me tell you something I know without a shadow of a doubt, that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm not telling you theory. I'm telling you I've been there. And, I, and all week I've been asking, Holy Spirit, is there what's in my life? Is there anything else in my life right now that's grieving you? It, have I done something that I have not realized? Is, if, whatever it is, I don't want anything to come between us. So as we close, I want to I wanna lead you in a prayer this morning and ask God to, to shine His light on your life and reveal those things that maybe that, 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 that you don't even realize, but they're grieving Him this morning. And before we pray, though, let me remind you, that the Holy Spirit is a person. He has a mind. He has a will. He has emotions. And listen to me. He desperately wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. If you join us today and you've never committed your life to Jesus, you never started this relationship with Him, this morning you can do that. This morning you can do it right where you are. You can invite Jesus into your heart. And let me tell you something. When you do that, the Holy Spirit, the person we talked about today, will come into your life. Hallelujah. He will live in you. He will walk with you. And He will never leave you. Oh, hallelujah. If you want to do that this morning, I invite you to, says, to repeat this simple prayer with me. It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science and it's not a magic formula. It's just doing what the Bible says to do. And I just invite you to, to say this. Just close your eyes this morning with me. Just say, Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I confess that you are God's son who died and rose again. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and make me a new person in you. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. In your name I pray. Amen. If you said that this morning, and maybe if for your first time you recommitted your life to Jesus, just take a minute, go on that connect card I talked about and let us know you made a decision. There's a couple boxes on the bottom that you can check out. Church, before we get into the, the fruits of the spirits, before we get into the gifting of the Spirit, before we get into the power of the Holy Spirit that He wants to work in our lives, if, we're not, if we don't have an open and clean relationship with Him, if we don't see Him as a person, we're never going to build a relationship with Him. And let me tell you, all those other things we're going to be talking about, they're, they're things that flow out of our relationship with Him. Hallelujah. So I want to pray this morning that make sure that there's nothing in your life that is grieving Him and impacting your fellowship with Him. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all who joined us today. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that you would shine your light on our hearts today. God, search us. Lord, search us, Father God. Lord, I pray that your light would extend, Father God, to the very reaches of our hearts and minds. Lord, don't let us put anything, Father God, hide anything in the closet as you come, Father God. Don't let us hide anything away under the bed. Lord, show us, Father, anything, oh God, that offends you in our lives. Lord, we thank you for all you've done for us. Father, we repent, Lord, and ask for forgiveness of those things, Father, 
that have offended you, that have grieved you, and we didn't even realize it. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would forgive us, that you would cleanse us, Lord, and restore the intimacy that we have with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. I can't wait for next week. This is the foundation. We have to understand what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives and that He is a person. And then we can talk about how we let others see Him in us. Amen. God bless you, Crossroads. See you next week.